Notice, what did I say? On time. If they're not paying on time, you have obligated to cover that debt and that will absolutely be considered in your debt ratio. This video is gonna be helpful to you because if you're considering co-signing a mortgage loan for somebody, this is information that you've really got to know. It's critical, it's crucial. Do not co-sign without watching this video and then making sure you're asking all of the very important questions before you sign on that dotted line. So hang through to the end and I'm gonna give you all the scoop. Welcome to your one-stop shop for anything and everything mortgage education. I drop new videos every Tuesday and Saturday. My name is Stephanie Weeks and I'm so excited and so passionate about being a loan officer. I've actually been doing this for 17 years and there are over 300,000 loan officers in the nation. In the past several years in a row, I've actually been recognized in the top 1% of loan officers for production. And in addition to that, I've actually been named for the first time last year for 2019 in the Scotsman Guide of Top Originators. Very exciting. So I do know what I'm talking about. I love this information, I love this stuff, and I am eager to share it with you. You know when you're starving and you go out to eat and the appetizers are cool, but like you really, really wanna get to the meal? Let's dive into the meal of this video today. Co-signer. First of all, a borrower is very self-explanatory. It's the person borrowing on the property because I'm talking about mortgage loans today, not auto loans or anything else. So a borrower is a customer basically that is financing a property and they are the borrower on the loan. In some instances, people need or want for some reason a co-signer. One thing that's very confusing is that a uniform residential loan application is a standard form. So if my borrower is filling out the form and they have borrower and co-borrower, right? They fill that out just as a standard form. The co-signer that may come in to play, they're gonna get their own uniform residential loan application, which is identical. So that loan application, it's not gonna say co-signer. It's not gonna say co-borrower. You're actually gonna complete that section as borrower on that document. But the way the loan officer puts the file together and submits it with all the notations that you're in, in fact the co-borrower in that, in that situation. And some of the questions that you answer on that application are also gonna help to indicate and validate that you're a co-signer and not a co-borrower or not a borrower. Hopefully that makes sense. That does confuse a lot of people. The co-signer is not the borrower. They are the co-signer. They are agreeing to step up and guarantee that loan to be repaid if the borrower does not. I actually had this question come up yesterday from someone that's in another state that I'm not covering and they had a bunch of questions around this. It's very simple. If you co-sign for someone and that mortgage payment is $1,000 a month and they're late on that payment, it's gonna mess up your credit just like it's gonna mess up theirs. If they default on that loan, it's gonna mess up your credit just like it's gonna mess up theirs. If they're late or they default, the purpose is they shouldn't be late or default because you should have an agreement with them that if they're going to be late, they need to call you immediately because you're gonna to have to make that payment to make sure that your credit is not adversely affected. But I've seen in so many cases where that phone call is not made and that payment is late, sometimes more than once, sometimes multiple times in a row, sometimes sporadically, and that co-signer's credit is greatly affected by that. In the same token, if they default on that loan and that loan becomes due and payable, $100,000 in this example, then you're agreeing to pay $100,000. It's very simple. It is not a small thing to agree to co-sign a mortgage for somebody. Many people wonder, if the co-signer has to be on title and have ownership in the property, if you choose to go that route and co-sign for someone or obtain a co-signer if you're the borrower, it actually varies by loan type. Sometimes they can be on title, but don't have to. And sometimes they must be on title. It's going to depend on a number of factors. You're gonna to have to discuss that directly with your lender for those exact details 
for your specific scenario. Don't forget to ask. I think those are hugely, hugely important questions. So don't forget to ask those. A co-signer does not fix bad credit or overcome bad credit. So if your lender requires a 640 credit score, as an example, and you have a 620, your answer is not, can I get a co-signer? Because you still have to meet the minimum criteria of the score itself to be able to proceed and get a co-signer. You probably might go, well, then what the heck's the purpose? Again, it's not to fix credit. It maybe is to help offset negative credit, but not overcome a score requirement. Sometimes it's also to bring some assets to the table, maybe because the borrower doesn't have enough money that's needed to be verified. So a co-signer might come in if they don't want to be a donor and do a gift, a co-signer might come in and co-sign because they have a lot of assets. So they make the file stronger and maybe approvable versus denied. Another reason is it could help to offset a debt to income ratio. Let's say that you have a ratio of 60% and you bring in a co-signer, what's gonna happen is all their income and all your income comes together, all their debt and all your debt comes together, and you get a combined ratio. So while your debt ratio might be 60% and it needs to be 45 potentially, when you combine it all together and add that co-signer, maybe now the overall debt ratio is 40% and that might make the difference between approval versus denial. Another example that happens a lot and also has to do with debt to income ratio. Let's say if you switched jobs and let's say if I'm going to give you just a couple of examples. There's, there's so many examples. So I'm just going to give you a couple. Let's say that you've been a nurse and you've been a nurse for five years and you decided to go travel nurse and you've only been travel nursing for less than two years, less than 18 months, let's say maybe six months. It seems crazy. But because you now don't have a set schedule or a two-year history to figure out what you're likely to make when you travel, how often you choose to travel, all that kind of stuff, you might not be able to get credit for any income. So you might meet everything else on the loan looks great, but you can't get credit for income. A co-signer could come in and help that situation. Another similar, exa similar example, you work for car dealerships and you've either gotten like a guaranteed, not a draw, that's different. You've either gotten like a guarantee or a salary and now you have this great opportunity. You can make so much more money and you're gonna switch to commission. And again, it's not been two years, it's not been 18 months. Maybe it's just been a year. Maybe it's just been a couple of months. Well, when you are 100% commission, it's the same thing. What are you gonna make? And the only way to determine moving forward is to take and analyze the past which is typically deemed as a two year average. So those would be another couple examples of where co-signers might come into play. Does being a co-signer affect you, the co-signer, when you go to get another loan? It is case by case. I know it probably drives everybody crazy when I say that, but that's how lending goes, it's case by case. I'm gonna give you the general answer, the one that if you go with this answer, it's probably the safest and you can't go wrong but there are exceptions. Let's say I'm the co-signer. Let's say that I co-signed four months ago and you've made three payments. Now I'm going to get a mortgage. Because only three payments have passed, we haven't seen a stable history. Only three payments have passed that you have made directly to the mortgage that I haven't made. That mortgage payment for your mortgage that I co-signed is gonna be counted in my debt ratio and affect me when I go to get another house. Let's give you, one. let's look at another situation though, another example. Let's say that it's been 12 months or more. I'm the co-signer, I'm going to get a mortgage for myself. It comes up on my credit. I explain that I'm the co-signer, not the borrower. That can be validated through the credit bureau. It can be validated through the loan closing documents. And then I can say, look, it's been open for more than 12 months and we can prove through bank transfers, bank checks, automatic payments, that the borrower paid the mortgage directly, had nothing to do with me, the money did not come through me, paid that mortgage directly for the last 12 months and on time. In that case, it won't be counted against my debt ratio. Almost always. Notice, what did I say? On time. If they're not paying on time, 
you have obligated to cover that debt and that will absolutely be considered in your debt ratio. I always love to offer a free gift or free download. So the free download for today is going to be a free copy of a PDF version of my book, best-selling book called Mortgage Peace. Everything you need to know about mortgages in a quick and easy read of one hour or less. Hope you enjoy it and please also share it with your friends and family. I love engaging with everyone. If you feel like this video has been very helpful, please type in all caps YES in the comments. That's YES. If you would consider being a co-signer after watching this full video. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Also hit the bell to be notified. Remember, I drop videos every Tuesday and Saturday. Be sure to DM me with any questions. I love communicating with everyone and I would love to also connect on social media. My Insta handle is underscore the real Stephanie Weeks and I also have a website, stephanieweeks.com.